Greetings, I'm Solar Scully, and welcome back to the Resident Evil commentary. Now we are in the creepy caverns, but luckily for Shill, she doesn't have to go it alone, because who will be on the other side of this door? Just you wait. Oh, Jill. What good timing. A moment ago I heard someone's voice coming from this hole. Let's go together since it's dark and we can't see very well. Okay, let's go. Okay, then I'm gonna cover you. Let's hurry. Hey, are you all right? I can go first if you want me to. Okay, let's go, Barry. I'm depending on you. Uh, now we finally have an AI partner, just as it was meant to be. In one of the original editions of Resident Evil? Uh, but yeah, Barry will take out enemies if they are nearby. I guess as was meant to be the original idea of the AI support partner, but... Yeah. I have no idea what the hell happens, actually, if you uh, choose to have Barry stay there or let him go ahead of you. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe worth another playthrough to see those differences. I don't know if it affects the uh, endings of the game at any point, but... Hmm. Something to... Research later on, I guess. By the way, get a load of this theme right here. Sounds, uh, very Doom 64 in terms of sound design, and, uh... Goddamn, like, I mean, uh... Say what you will about a good soundtrack, man, but it really <laughs> sets the tone and atmosphere. It's, uh... Well, I mean, it makes these caverns feel a lot more creepier than I think the art design otherwise conveys. I mean... It, it looks really cavernous. I mean, there are some creepy monsters that Barry takes out instantaneously, but... Yeah, I don't know, they just kind of look like really grotty tiles, that more like somebody hasn't cleaned their bathroom in about three weeks. Well, probably a bit more than that, but you know what I'm saying. Either way, uh, I think it's about time we meet a new face, but uh, who could this be? Could it be Barry's mentor? Is that Jill? Is that voice Enrico's? Yeah? You're alive! Wait there! Are you with anybody, Jill? What? Oh, yes. Enrico! So, Barry and Jill together. Are you all right, Enrico? The stars are doomed. Someone is a traitor. Everything was plotted from the start by Umbrella. Ha! Huh? No, it cannot be. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I, well, I mean, I guess maybe considering that Barry rushed over to him, it probably meant a bit more to him, because, uh, yes indeedy, a bit of trivia here, actually, uh, before Barry left the Air Force and joined Stars, Enrico was actually Barry's mentor. So, yeah, everything Barry learned about his police work, and pretty much all of his skills, really, he learned from Enrico, who, uh, the fact that he's captain of Bravo team kind of makes me... Well, okay, I do know the reason why he wasn't made captain of Alpha Team, but you would have thought with the man's, you know, military experience, you know, his, again, stalwart police work probably would have made him a prime candidate to be, you know, commander of Alpha Team, but, uh, yeah, let's just say that, uh, Wesker had a few connections that got him his job. I mean, after all, with hair as fabulously slicked back as that and, you know, sunglasses just so fantastically 80s in the 90s... In the 90s? Ech, we should. Basically, uh, yeah, Henrico. Kind of a sad loss, to be honest. And I suppose that there's also something I can mention a lot about uh, a lot of the members of Stars. Like, a lot of them did have, like, a prior military experience. I mean, again, you have some people like Chris or whatever who was in the Air Force. You have characters like, um, uh, you know, Jill Forrest and, uh, you know, Henrico himself who did have military experience. So, yeah, Stars being an elite police unit. Yeah, it's primarily due to the fact that they have training that you otherwise wouldn't have gotten from the police force, so... Hmm. Does a... I mean, it does make sense that they probably are internationally renowned, although I get the impression that it might be a Japanese-y translation error, because... You know, police forces are usually 
uh, kind of responsible for wherever they're localized in terms of their jurisdiction, rather than, you know, Interpol or whatever. But, I mean, the point is, uh, Stars does have a bit of a reason as for why they're famous, and certainly have the skills to back them up. Well, I mean, except I suppose no military training could prepare them at this point for, well, you know, monsters, zombies, and everything in between. By the way, this place is infamous for more than one thing. Crank puzzles. Woo. Oh, uh, by the way, you can't jump over that because that's a bottomless pit. Not that you could fall in to begin with. Also, what are we doing? Are we moving the earth? Is there like meant to be like a... Whatever. I, I guess maybe it's kind of similar to that, um, to that one puzzle in Silent Hill 2 when you're rotating the face to get the proper doorway to appear. And again, you might think the previous crank you had would do the job, but no, we have a square crank, whereas that's a hexagonal crank. So naturally, we just need to finagle around until we can get to where we need to go and fulfill the whole of the thing in the caverns. I mean, I will say, despite the rather creepy atmosphere, the caverns themselves aren't too interesting of an area to really explore. I mean, it is rather short, which is, you know, merciful, and it does have a few unique set pieces here and there. The Portorat Demonstratum with, you know, the boulder. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> just hug to your right and or left, or whatever direction is the thing, and uh, you should survive. Also, um, and again, maybe this might just be habit from, I think, Resident Evil 2 onwards, but yeah, I always find myself de-equipping my weapons around there. Uh, no idea why, I think later games might have it so that you move a bit faster. Oh no, it is a hunter! And it also has the ability to open doors. Creepy. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if you move faster if you de-equip your weapons, but uh, that's what I usually do around that point. And uh, yeah... Hunter's attack in action. I don't think I'm at low enough health for it to matter though, so... Uh, yeah, whatever. Like, e either way, I still get a bit paranoid, so just, uh... Be on your guard. Like, I mean, they do have a vocal tell when they do the jump swipe attack, but... At the same time, though, it is also, uh... Well, something that might be too little too late by the time they actually, you know, do that vocal grunt, so... Yeah. Nothing will save you this time. But I mean, all the same though, like, uh, yeah, small area, just has a few puzzles, that's about it really. I mean, the most important thing you'll really find in the caverns, apart from Monrico, was, uh, well, first of all, this giant stop-motion spider that actually has a rather creepy effect. I don't know, like, that little stop-motion uh, movement is, ca it, it kind of reminds me of, um, uh, the original Terminator, actually, when, you know, you actually saw the Terminator skeleton going after, uh, John Connor and Kyle Reese, which is... Again, like, I mean, the effect is a little bit dated, but at the same time, it's also really effective. Oh, no, by the way, on the off chance that you didn't bring your knife with you, yeah. Use it to cut open the spider web. Not that you could have used, like, a flame round to burn it all away. And, uh, make sure to get out of the room quickly, because otherwise, well, uh, the little phantom babies will come after you. Because they were born, and you killed their mommy. See? That's what I was talking about. But anyway, as I was saying beforehand, like, I mean, the only real other thing of importance is that you get the other metal proof that you need to access the final area of the game. Which, uh, yeah, after this part, we are pretty much going to be, well, reaching the end of the Resident Evil commentary. I mean, it's, uh, been a bit rambling in parts, but I've actually had a lot of fun with this. And again, I suppose that does also contribute to the sort of atmosphere that Resident Evil 1 has. Like, I mean, again, from a gameplay experience, again, it's really well structured, it's a very cozy ride, but at the same time, though, even when you're just uh, sort of shooting the breeze or, you know, just talking about it, it's a lot of fun. I mean, you can riff over the cutscenes or you can uh, just talk good about it. It's legitimately well thought out game design and it's just a lot of the aspects of gameplay. Again, Resident Evil is, again, it's a series that's also fun to talk about as it is to play and... Well, again, I can see why this series has lasted for as long as it has. Well, I mean, apart from the inordinate amount of faith that Capcom has in the franchise, I mean... Jesus Christ, I mean, I think next to Street Fighter, Resident Evil is probably... It's, a uh, Baby, for the lack of a better phrase. But anyway, let's... Do item management. The game. Uh, keep the crank. Yeah, it's also worth noting that you should probably pick up some blue herbs around this area, because, uh... 
Well, uh, this is also where the return of the little yawn babies come back, and of course they have the poison status, and when you get poison you can't see your status, so then... It's just a mishmash of having to do a thing before you do another thing, and just hope you survive. But first of all, let's have a save of the game. With our ink ribbon. And you see, like, I mean, we've already got 15 of the fucking things, so... Yeah, for those of you worried about running out of ink ribbons, you shouldn't worry too much. I mean, really, the ink ribbon system is fine enough, it's just... Don't go crazy with your saves or save after every little thing, and you should be relatively okay. It might seem a bit daunting on a first playthrough, but stick with it, and again, managing your saves and your inventory is completely manageable. I mean, I think it's worth noting that the original Resident Evil is much more liberal with its save system than something like, say, uh, Tormented Souls is, which I'd like to remind you is a modern game that takes, you know, a lot of people's antsy skepticisms about, you know, the tank controls thing well into mind. And that game has a stingy save system, so... I mean, really, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, Resident Evil is firm but fair. Tee hee hoddle ha but. Yes, indeed, I'm being juvenile now, with the word but, like I'm ten years old or whatever. It's also worth noting, and I believe what is meant to be Chris's uh, soul scenario weapon, or I guess maybe if you don't have Barry along with you? Uh, but yeah, uh, Chris can actually unlock the flamethrower as a weapon here. Yeah, which there was also initially meant to be more rounds for, but sadly, it was not meant to be. Oh shit, here comes Indiana Jones, part two. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Jill. Da -da 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 Banana. By the way, when is Indiana Jones 5 coming out? I mean, I seem to remember like hearing a lot of talk about it, like it apparently is happening, but I really don't know anything else or if it's gonna even consider like. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which is... eh. I don't know, maybe it's Indiana Jones and the Mo Disc of Death? Eh, yeah, well, whatever. I completely forgot what I was going to be talking about next. Thanks, Indiana Jones, you completely fucked me up. Yeah, but anyway, this is pretty much all we need, just to... Use our crank puzzle. Da -na -na. Yep, it's about as exciting as it is. I love it when Resident Evil has crank puzzles. It's such invigorating gameplay. Especially when you... Gotta do it several more times. So, how's everybody been doing? Uh, how's your day been? You know, uh... Having a few beers recently? Been enjoying life? Surviving? I'm asking you a question, I'm expecting an answer. Oh, well, this is going swimmingly. Post how your day went in the comments and I might... Uh, read them. Because apparently telling people to do things makes them do it. According to YouTube engagement shit. Because daring to care about the... Peons that support you in your life gives you money. Or something. Allegedly. I don't think it actually works that way for anybody who has half a fucking brain cell, but... Hey! Pretending to care about the people that give you money for hard drugs gets you money. Anyway, this actually comes to kind of be reminiscent to a similar puzzle we'll be seeing a bit later in the game. So, uh, move your optimal statue shit into position and, uh, do more crank puzzles. God damn, Resident Evil, what is your obsession with the crank puzzles? Maybe this bizarre music will tell you to calm down with the crank puzzles. Yeah, but yeah, basically move it across on the wall, put it under the light-colored square, and bada-bing, we do the thing and we get a right and we can finally blow this bug. There we go. And what is our prize? The Doom Book 2! Maybe it contains the lost, uh, Doom Bible treatment from, uh, Tom Hall, I think it was. You know, the guy who kind of wrote it as, like, more of a generic action movie with some admittedly interesting characters, but is completely different to the Doom that we know and love today. Actually, that might be worth talking about if I ever get around to covering, uh, Doom 1993. I mean, it would be a pretty brisk uh, gain of playthrough, so... Yeah, I might consider it, actually. Uh, during the summer months. When it's nice and hot. Just like hell. And the demons. 
But yeah, all that aside, that is pretty much us with the, well, the caverns. Brisk, kinda boring, contains a little bit more crank puzzles than I would have liked, but heck wish that's the end of it. Anyway, that's the lift, and now we can finally move on to the last area of the game. Of course, we could take a door into the final area of the game, but uh, it's locked. And won't open, except under special circumstances. So yeah, this is pretty much where the heliport is. Uh, that is exactly what we saw... <coughs> <coughs> uh, excuse me. That's pretty much what we saw over from the mansion, so uh... I guess maybe the caverns is meant to be like the underground area where we retreat to? I don't know, not a very convenient place to have your emergency exit sort of thing. The remake kind of actually goes a little bit... Kind of fucking do lally with it by having like a minecart section underneath. That I think was only purely added for Lisa Trevor shenanigans, but I mean, even still. But regardless of such, picture of a wolf put in the wolf thing, picture of an eagle put in the eagle thing. Or is it a phoenix? Uh, whatever. I have no idea. Anyway, put him in and get ready for some deliciously 90s CG. Yes, to the back cave, old chum. So, come on, tank controls. So anyway, on that note, I am Solid Scully. We're going to be going down to the back cave as we descend the staircase. And next time on the Resident Evil commentary, we shall enter the Matrix. That is the laboratory. Catch you next time, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.